and welcome or welcome back to the 100 Acre Wool Knitting Podcast. My name is Bella and I'm coming to you from the North Bay area of California in the U.S. I am a knitter and knitwear designer and on this podcast I like to share with you what I'm w working on, what I'm knitting, what I'm making, and that's usually knitting but also sometimes some sewing and fiber arts, uh, spinning, things like that thrown in as well. But today, I thought I would share with you a wrap-up of everything that I knit in 2022. It is now the beginning of 2023, a new year. Hello. Hello, a new year. I always love a new year. It feels like a fresh start, even though it is metaphorical, um, pretty much. Uh, it still feels very nice to have a brand new year. So I hope you've had a lovely start to the new year so far. And in this episode, you might see some things that you've seen before. Um, there will also be some things that I haven't shown you yet that I was able to finish at the very tail end of last year. So let's get straight into things. It has been so cold and rainy here the past week or so, and I am just cozied up with a cup of tea and my sweater and my hat. It gets very cold in here, and as you can probably tell, quite gloomy. So I definitely need to bundle up, <laughs> even just at home. So let's get started on this pile of knitting in front of me. So this is everything that I've finished in 2022, knitting wise. I'm um, not going to talk about spinning or sewing in this podcast today. Um, so these are all the projects that I actually finished in 2022, not including things that are already gifted and away. Um, so yeah, let's just get started with from the beginning of the year in January. So. I'm going to put this pile down because I just know already it's going to be flying all over the place if I keep it on my lap. Okay, <laughs> so the first finished object of 2022 was, oh, the mystery knit along from 2021. I didn't finish it actually until 2022, <laughs> in January of 2022. So this was Stephen West's mystery knit along. Um, Shawlography is the name of this one. I loved this knit so much. It was so much fun. This was the first mystery knit along from anyone that I've ever partake partaken in and I just had so much fun with it. Getting the clues every week and knitting on it. I was very diligent at the beginning and I was doing a lot of <laughs> a lot of like trying to do only that section in the first week and the, you know so on and so forth following the clues when you're supposed to be knitting them or when Steven is sending them out. Um, I was doing that at the beginning for these first couple sections and then it just got to be so much knitting as the shawl expands and I wasn't able to finish it. Um, yeah, but it was so much fun. And I have gotten so much wear out of this since casting it off. I just love it so much. It's so beautiful with so many textures going on and all these intricate details, but it feels still very wearable. So the yarn that I used for this is a really great combo for a shawl. It's alpaca, or sorry, it's Isaiah 2. Um, so it's an alpaca and wool base, half and half alpaca and wool. So yeah, it's just, it's got the drape from the alpaca and the warmth from the wool. So I just really love this shawl and how drapey and flowy it is. And one uh, change that I did to the shawl was the bottom edging here. If you're familiar with this design, you may <laughs> you may be able to tell it's different. Um, the original was supposed to have stripes, like kind of vertical stripes on the edging here, but I didn't really like that look personally, and I wanted something a little different. So I actually went back to Stephen West's Mystery Knit Along shawl from 2020. I believe it was. Um, I think that was Slip Stravaganza. I didn't knit that shawl, but I really loved the border on that one, how that looked. So I just used that portion of that pattern just for the edging here um, and used the same colors that I used throughout the rest of the shawl. And I really love how it came out. I think it's just, it really ties everything together the way I like. So yeah, just really, really happy with how this shawl came out. I would definitely recommend knitting it. Um, yeah, it's a great pattern. Great pattern, great knitting experience, and I get tons of wear out of it. So, let's see. Next is the big boy. 
I call it the big boy because it took forever to knit. <laughs> um, the Anne Boleyn jacket. So this jacket I knit mostly in 2021. Um, I would say it was probably 90% in 2021 and then did all the finishing touches and finishing up in the early of in the early beginnings of 2022. So, oh my gosh, this is the Anne Boleyn jacket by Alice Starmore. This is the biggest knitting project I have ever taken on and probably will ever take on. There is just so much going on. You can probably tell there are probably thousands of baubles in this whole jacket. There are baubles on both sides of the sleeves, the front, the back, this beautiful little collar at the top. It's just a gorgeous piece. I am just blown away by Alice Starmore's attention to detail in pattern writing and fit and everything. It's just, it's a work of art, truly. Um, I really loved knitting it. Well, most of the time. <laughs> I really loved knitting it because I was thinking of the end garment. This is definitely not a process knit. I don't think it would be, um, just because of how fine of a gauge it is and how long it takes, truly. Like, each one of these strands of baubles or columns of baubles have cables on either side, and there's just a lot of them. The baubles are done in intarsia, and then you have these sections. There's this back belt here with mixed techniques. So you have intarsia and baubles and cables, and they're all mixed together. It's just a lot going on, and it takes quite a while. But my favorite part is the cuffs here. Can you see the details on that? It is just gorgeous. Absolutely regal, totally fits with Anne Boleyn. As you may know, this was inspired by um, Tudor Women. It was part of her Tudor Roses book. Um, so inspired by Anne Boleyn of the Tudor era. So just gorgeous, gorgeous details. Um, I used Alice Starmore's Hebridean two-ply yarn for this project. She actually was so kind, um, her yarn company, Virtual Yarns, was so kind to send me all of the yarn necessary to create this project. And I really, really love the yarn. It is such a hardy, but not, it, it's definitely rustic and woolen spun and long wearing, but it doesn't feel rough. It actually feels quite soft for this type of yarn, in my opinion. And I just love how it's worn. I honestly don't get much wear out of this because I want to keep it in great shape. It took a very, very long time and it's, I just break it out for special occasions. I wore this on Valentine's Day last year and um, just on some special family occasions. So <laughs> it's definitely not a everyday wear sort of piece for me. Um, but yeah, I just, I love the yarn. This is definitely a yarn for heirloom pieces. I think this yarn, it feels like it will last forever and be very long wearing. Even if you did want to use it for a garment that would be more often worn. Um, yeah, highly recommend it. <laughs> so yeah, just beautiful finishing, um, set in sleeves and just gorgeous details. If you're looking for a pattern that is absolutely gorgeous in its craftsmanship and the work that goes into it, just kind of a showpiece, I would recommend this pattern, or really anything from Alice Starmore, to be honest. That's kind of her specialty, is creating absolutely gorgeous, one-of-a-kind sort of pieces, in my opinion. Alrighty, and next is another big project for me. This was, or is, <laughs> the Yell Cardigan by Marie Wallen. Hopefully I can get it all in here. It's quite large. <laughs> so this one was really fun. It's just an all over color work, sort of a kimono style cardigan. So it's really, really comfortable. I get so much wear out of this. This is probably my most worn sweater of any kind, hand knit or not. Um, it just, it's so easy to throw on because it's a cardigan. And since it is quite oversized, um, you knit the body width wider than you are by quite a bit. And the sleeves, I also um, adjusted to make them 
straight length, or it's not straight length, but like straight sleeves, so I didn't do any decreases, so the sleeves have plenty of room to wear garments underneath. So I can pretty much wear this in any weather. I can make it warmer or just throw it on a dress <laughs> and go out um, if it's not too cold out. So I just get so, so much wear out of this one. Um, and I love all of the details of this. Just look at this color work motif. It is just so beautiful. Kind of a classic Fair Isle style, but just very very lovely how it's done and I will show you the inside because everyone always likes to see that so this pattern another great thing about it is that the color work motif of like the main section of this fabric it's not a pattern that has too many long floats I would say there's only a couple of rows in the entire repeat um, in the entire chart repeat that you would need to catch your floats so it's really easy to just have a super sturdy fabric um, yeah, it doesn't require too much effort from the knitter to weave in all of your floats because it's kind of done already um, because of the way the pattern is designed. So really, really love this one. I definitely want to make more from Rewallen in the future, but I just have so many things I want in it. I don't know when I'll actually get around to it, but, and I do think they are kind of a labor of love because she has such intricate, beautiful color work pieces. Um, one thing, the only thing that I don't really like about this pattern, at least how mine came out, is you can probably see the neckline is very, very rolly. It is flipping in on itself. Um, so that was an issue that I saw some other knitters discussing um, on Ravelry and such, talking about how either the hem, either like the body hem was rolling up on them, so it would like flip up this way, um, and or the neckline would be rolling on itself. So that's what's happening to mine. I have not gotten around to fixing it yet. I definitely want to and will at some point, but I've honestly just been wearing this with like a shawl pin. So I'll just kind of overlap it and then just tack it with a little shawl pin right there. And that's been good enough for me. It doesn't look perfect, but it does the job and it's still gorgeous. So I will fix that at some point. If you would like to hear from some knitters that have fixed this issue, I have definitely seen a lot of YouTube um, podcasts and tutorials and things on, on like solutions that knitters have found for this. But I'm probably going to either tack in a ribbon on the underside and tack that down to keep it flat, um, or I will undo my cast off edge and knit it, knit it longer and then kind of fold it over and make it double. That might make the fabric too thick, but I'm not sure. We will see. I will update you all on here um, when I actually do that. And then another big thing about this piece was it was my first steaking. It was the first time I ever steaked anything. So that means that you cut your knitting. <laughs> um, quite scary for a lot of knitters. It was scary for me a bit, but I wasn't too scared because uh, this kind of a yarn, I used Jameson and & Smith and Jameson's of Shetland wool, which is a very toothy, very grabby yarn. <laughs> it likes to hold on to itself, so I wasn't too concerned that it was going to unravel. Plus the fact that knitting doesn't really like to unravel horizontally, it would much more it would be much more likely to unravel vertically. So, I don't know. I wasn't too concerned. But still, since this piece had taken me so long to knit, and I definitely didn't want that happening, I did also create a little crochet chain. This little purple crochet, cro crochet chain here, um, just to tack down the edge to make sure it wasn't going anywhere. So that worked out well, and yeah, definitely highly recommend this pattern. It was very, very fun to knit. Did take me a while, but it could have gone faster, to be honest. Um, but it's it's really, it's so nice to wear, and it's so cozy warm um, without the fabric being too thick, which is great. Okay, I think we need a tea break. Lots of talking. Hmm. I wonder, if you have some plans already for 2023, then let me know down below. I would love to hear what you're planning on knitting in this new year. I will be sharing with you my plans towards the end of the video, um, 
but yeah, I'm always curious to see what other people are planning because that's very exciting to hear about new pod or projects or patterns or things like that. So let me know down below. And um, next we have a test knit that I did. So this, oh my gosh, this was also my first time knitting with new to knit yarn. Um, which is my newfound love, newfound love of 2022. Um, so this pattern is called the Swirl Slipover by Twin Knits, um, a group of twin sisters that are <laughs> knitwear designers together. I, th I just think that's so cool. Um, yeah, so this was a test knit that I did for them back in 2022, springish. And yes, as I said, it was my first time using new to den yarn. I really love how this garment feels. It is so squishy and bouncy and warm. I just, it's light, but also feels very cozy and it just holds you at the same time, if that makes sense. This was not the recommended yarn for the pattern, but I made it work. Um, it, I do think it came out quite a bit fluffier and puffier than it was maybe supposed to be, um, but I really love how it came out. And I held, so I held New to Den double, and then I also held a strand of my own hand-dyed yarn, um, naturally hand-dyed yarn on a Surrey alpaca base. So yeah, this thing is just so soft and fluffy and comfortable. Um, I really, I, I don't know how to describe this fabric. It's very very squishy it's probably the squishiest hand knit that I have <laughs> um, that I've done so far so I really enjoyed this knit this knitting process the pattern was great and it's really quite simple um, it's all over cables so the entire thing is cable knit but in my opinion they're kind of simple cables so it's it's definitely not too much brain power to execute even though it looks it just looks so nice um, yeah, would definitely recommend the pattern, and it did go quite quickly, I think, because of the gauge, the yarn was very thick that you're using, and it felt like it went quite quickly, also because you don't have to knit sleeves, so, um, yeah, it is a little bit oversized, um, as per the pattern, and I really love how it fits, it just, it looks so elegant when you're wearing it. Um, my one little gripe is not with the pattern, it is with my yarn choice for this pattern, so the edging, um, they recommend that you make a Italian bind off, a sewn bind off. And you may know if you have used <laughs> unspun yarn before, Italian bind offs are not the greatest thing to do with unspun yarn, just because when you pull on the yarn, it wants to break. Um, if you keep pulling on it from too far away repeatedly, it's just a recipe for disaster. So <laughs> that was really not fun. I did do it, I did do the sewn bind off, Italian bind off on the hems here. Um, and I think they came out pretty well, but it just took me forever to do. And I really didn't, <laughs> I really didn't like the process at all. I would not recommend using unspun yarn for an Italian bind off unless you really, really want that look. Um, yeah, I don't know. It didn't really seem worth it to me. But um, yeah, so because of that, I did not do the Italian bind off for the sleeve holes or armholes. I just did a regular cast off and left it as is. I think it looks great. Um, can't really tell. So anyways, <laughs> that was my only little um, thing with making the pattern that was not the greatest, but I have gotten a lot of wear out of this and it is very, very cozy. It definitely keeps your core very, very warm. I've worn this on rainy days and really, really windy days and nothing will penetrate this fabric. It is really great. Like literally I've seen raindrops just, just on top of it, just sitting there. <laughs> like if you see a raindrop on a leaf, it's not soaking in, it's just laying on top. So you, you stay very, very dry in this. I love it. Okay, next is another test knit that I did. Oh, I forgot something. These escaped my view. So these were actually something that I did earlier in the year. These are the Elikia slippers, I believe, um, by Soprano Knits, and they were in the Lina Book of Socks, 52 Weeks of Socks. I love these slippers so much. I was getting so much wear out of these in the summer months because I love having something on my feet for 
like in-home use. I love always wearing some sort of a sock or slipper on my feet. I just don't like how hardwood, we have hardwood floors and I, I don't like how that feels on my feet. So I just really loved wearing these around and having something cozy on my feet that wasn't too warm. Um, yeah, these aren't really getting wear right now in the winter, but that is okay because I have other hand knits to wear instead um, that are warmer, but these are just adorable little house slippers. Would definitely recommend knitting this pattern. And also because they are so kind of small, <laughs> or rather the uh, area that it takes up is, is not very much, it's a really, really quick knit. I think I knit each slipper in one day and then another day for all the finishing. So like the tassels and then these little stitches along the edgings. Just really cute little details and also on the heel there. Hope you can see. Just really cute. And then there's even some bobbles around the front. I just love all the little details of these and they're just so adorable. So I would definitely recommend that pattern. I think you can purchase it by itself at this point, or if you have the 52 Weeks of Socks book, then it's in there. So yeah, that gets a lot of wear. Oh yes, and one thing I will note um, about these to keep them sturdy, <laughs> um, for the base color, this gray color, I used actually an unknown yarn. It was gifted to me by a friend, a fellow podcaster here on YouTube, and we don't know what exactly this yarn is, but from what I can tell, it is 100% wool or almost 100% wool, and it is very, very rustic and grabby. Um, it was probably a worsted weight yarn and just very, very sturdy spin to it. Um, so I would definitely recommend using that kind of a yarn for this. I knit it, I think the pattern called for a DK weight yarn, but I wanted to use this yarn instead because um, I didn't want any chance of any sort of gaping or holes in the fabric um, for slippers or socks or anything like that. I would rather have the fabric be a little bit tighter and thicker um, rather than it being looser and getting holes quicker. <laughs> so that definitely worked out in these ones. Um, I have not gotten any holes. In fact, the fabric has gotten um, sturdier as I've been wearing them. So maybe you can see they have been felting on the kind of foot pad area up here and then also on the heels at the bottom. The fabric is just felting before it's breaking and there's no sign, pr pretty much no sign of wear on these besides the felting, um, which I think is just making it stronger. So really recommend knitting these at a tighter gauge or rather using a thicker yarn and then the same size needles <laughs> as the pattern recommends. Um, yeah, I really love a tight-knit slipper. Okay, now on to another test knit that I did. So this is called the Bocaria Basket. This is a pattern by Vanessa Palisa. And again, I used New to Yarn for this pattern. It was a super fun, super quick knit, really easy. I think any knitter could tackle this. If you know how to knit in the round, you could definitely tackle this. I don't even think it required any purling. Maybe it does at one point, but really, really simple. Um, and I get a lot of use out of this. I've been using it ever since I finished it. I've been using it as a project bag. I was actually using it as a project bag before filming this, but wanted to show it to you um, empty so you weren't distracted. <laughs> but yeah, I can actually fit about 600 grams of yarn in this. Um, so I have a sweaters quantity, a sweaters project going on in this one right now. And it just fits really great. And the handles can definitely take the weight. Um, it's just a really cute, really great bag. She has two sizes of this in the pattern, I believe. This one is the smaller size. And then she's got a larger, like, tote sort of a size, I think. Um, yeah, it would be great for picnics or grocery shopping or a project bag, of course. Um, just a really great, really cute little fun quick knit. I think this one only took like 100 grams of yarn too. So if you have one cake of Newt Den yarn or another unspun yarn, it might take more with a spun yarn um, just because those tend to be a little bit heavier, but or denser rather. But yeah, just a really great knit. Highly recommend it. 
Okay, and next, I think, is my first self-published pattern of 2022, and that is the Fields of Gold sweater. Here it is. I am still so happy with how this pattern came out, and it seems like you all really love it too. Um, I just love the little wheatgrass stitches, and I had so much fun when designing this, just playing with textures and just different things going on and the silhouette of the neckline and everything. Um, I also added some textures on the back. So this sweater was definitely inspired by my hometown. I live very close, or rather when I was living in LA, um, lived very close to a huge, huge field of wheatgrass, um, wild wheatgrasses. So that's where the inspiration for this one came from. And again, it was knit in New Den yarn, <laughs> knit and designed with New Den yarn. As you may be able to tell throughout 2022, I fell in love with New Den yarn and is now my favorite type of yarn. So I felt that this yarn really went well with the pattern. The color especially of this specific color was or is exactly the color of the wheatgrass where I used to live. Um, and also the fact that the yarn itself actually has grass in it. <laughs> because Nutiden is so minimally processed, um, you can definitely find vegetable matter throughout it when you're knitting. And it was just such a beautiful experience picking out these wheatgrass little specks while I was knitting something that was wheatgrass textured. Um, I just thought it was so cute. I've been getting a lot of wear out of this. I was wearing it a lot um, kind of in the summer evenings. This came out in, um, or it was published um, in, back in August. So I was getting a lot of wear in the summer evenings, keeping warm from the summer nights chill. And more recently, I have been needing to supplement with coats and hats and sweaters, or scarves and things like that. Because um, I did knit this one to be cropped length and also the sleeves are three-quarter length sleeves. So this version, this particular sample, was not knit for winter wear, but I have been seeing many of you knit it um, as a long sleeve version and also elongating the torso so that um, it's more winter appropriate and it just looks so great. Um, love seeing all the versions of this out there. So yes, I would definitely recommend my pattern to you. If you would like to knit something with a lot of fun texture and learn some new techniques, um, there are some kind of unusual um, techniques as far as construction and things like that. Um, so I do have a lot of tutorials linked in the pattern, video tutorials and such, on how to do all of these little details throughout. Um, I also really love how the neckline came out. It's kind of a mixture of a sweetheart and a scoop neck, so I just think it looks so great on all body types. It's just really beautiful face framing feature. So yeah, I really, really love how this pattern came out, and I actually have another pattern in the works inspired by this pattern, <laughs> kind of in the same vein series. So that will be coming out actually pretty soon. I'll be calling for test knitters on that. Um, and for now, let's get to the next project. So, let's see, what was next? I think it was my Kura socks. So, these are the, are the Kura socks. Oh my goodness, these have become my absolute favorite socks of any kind. <laughs> Hand it or not, these are my new favorite socks of all time. So the Kura is um, a sock pattern, no, a sock recipe, rather, designed by Evil Knits. Um, you can find her on Instagram. I will also link her down below, along with all of these patterns, everything that I'm talking about today. All the information is always down below this video in the description area. So yes, Evil Knits, um, she created this sock pattern recipe. So by recipe, that means that there aren't specific numbers that you have to follow, as for stitch counts, uh, needle size, yarn weight, things like that. It's very much kind of up to you what you want to knit, what kind of yarn you want to use, um, what size you're knitting it for. So it's very, very much kind of make it your own. Um, but she definitely gives you a really great place to start from and kind of work your sock around that. So 
really great tutorials. I would highly recommend you follow them and knit some socks from it. The only thing, um, I don't think she has them available on YouTube all of the time. Um, it's a series of YouTube tutorial videos, so I don't think she has them available all the time. If you are a New to Den patron, they are always available through that Patreon account. Um, but otherwise, I would just recommend following Evil Knits um, on her blog or her Instagram. You can reach out to her and see when these will be live next. Um, so that you can follow them yourself and create this wonder these wonderful socks. So this pair in particular I knit for the Inspired by Ellen Cal, which is still going on. And the Inspired by Ellen Cal, I won't <laughs> t say all of the information here right now. I will just link below the podcasters who are actually running the cal. Um, and it's essentially based around this colorwork motif here. Um, really beautiful color work motif. So it's kind of knit whatever you want, um, kind of make up a pattern or use a pattern existing and you can uh, adjust the color work pattern um, design to create something with this color work motif. Any sort of a knitted garment or accessory or what have you. So I decided to knit socks as part of that and I just, oh my they fit so perfectly. They actually, they literally fit like a glove. <laughs> they fit my feet like a like a glove. And the great thing about the Kura um, sock recipe is you don't get any holes. I've tried so many other knitting techniques for knitting socks: top down, bottom up, um, wrap and turn, heel and gusset, and all the different things. And this is definitely the one that I've found to be. The greatest outcome so it's like a glove and I think you could make this pattern work for any foot shape and also the fact that it's just really easy to knit or maybe not easy but it flows you don't have to pick up any stitches at any point it's kind of you just knit it toe up and it just feels like it knits itself <laughs> it just flies by and it's a really it's it's much more of an enjoyable experience than I've had with knitting some other socks so just highly recommend it and I also highly recommend using Nutiden or another unspun yarn for this. Again, similar to the Alikia slippers that I showed you before. These are not getting holes in them as I wear them. I wear these pretty much every day, to be honest. <laughs> when I'm just doing work around the house or even when I go out, I've been putting these in my boots, wearing these in my boots out and about. And they have only gotten stronger with wear. Um, again, the tops of the feet and the heels they are just felting. There is no sign, no sign at all of any kind of wearing out or like a hole is going to be coming soon. So I love these. Absolutely love these. And they're so warm. Just a great yarn and pattern combo here. I can't recommend this pattern to you more. You definitely need to knit some Kuda socks this year. And next up, I think I'm out of order. That's okay. We'll just go with my sweater next. <laughs> so what I'm wearing today is the Shifty Sweater by Andrea Mowry. I think I believe, mm, I believe I finished this sometime in August um, of last year. And oh my goodness, this was such a fun knit. It took me a while. I've knit it over quite a few months, but it was really an enjoyable knit. I had a lot of fun with it. There's just a, this really fun texture all throughout. If you're a knitter, you're probably aware of this pattern already. I feel like everyone and their mother have, has knit this. Um, but yeah, I would definitely knit it again, and I'm actually going to. I already have another one planned for a friend um, this year, so I'll be knitting that with my own hand spun. I'm going to be knitting, or rather spinning all the yarn for it, and then knitting the whole thing. I'm very, very excited. And I do recommend the pattern. Um, I had a little snafu with my version, completely knitter's fault. I was a bad knitter. Um, yeah, it was not the pattern's fault. So I would definitely recommend being a good knitter and knitting a gauge swatch because I did not for this and it turned out too big. So the pattern is designed to have a slight bit of negative ease to it and I did not gauge swatch. So I guessed my size um, and it, it just, it grew so much when I blocked it. I used all spin cycle um, dyed in the wool yarn for this, 
which is a superwash yarn and I'm not as accustomed to knitting with superwash yarn so I just didn't realize how much it was really going to grow um, in the blocking. <laughs> so it, it, it grew a lot and now you may be able to tell it's kind of puckery here around the yoke area. The rest of it is fine. It's definitely not tight on me. It's got a bit of positive ease, but it's comfortable. I still get a lot of wear out of it and I would want this area to fit me better. Um, yeah, it's not my favorite, but <laughs> it's definitely not the pattern's fault. That was all me. I should have knit a gauge swatch and then I would have been able to either adjust the needle size or the size I was knitting or both. Um, but yeah, would definitely recommend it. And you could use hand spun or spin cycle or anything like that, or just regular kind of yarn. I just think the texture is so much fun to knit and it's, it's a really cute outcome. So love that one. And okay, we'll just go with, Ooh, this was my second, my second pattern release of the year. This is the champagne tank. So this I designed kind of late summer, um, but it was, I really, really wanted a nice flowy, breathable knit tank top, and I really wanted some ruffles. So created these ruffles here at the bottom, had so much fun playing around with um, stitch counts and how to make it so that the ruffles are always going to stay ruffly, because sometimes I find that the ruffles can kind of flatten out over time. Um, if there isn't enough fabric down there, so it has definitely stayed ruffly and I was getting a ton of wear out of this when I first finished it, but now that it's winter, it's kind of a cold, actually a co uh, it's a cold knit. It's meant for warmer weather <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Um, I actually used my, um, my own naturally hand dyed yarn for this pattern and I used my linen alpaca and silk base. I think that's the makeup of it. <laughs> um, I haven't worked with it since I knit this one, but it's seriously a great summer knit. It's so breathable. It feels like a second skin when you're wearing it and knitting doesn't have to be warm. This is really what this showed me. You can have all year round knits and it actually will work. Like I was never sweating in this. I was never uncomfortable. It was just the yarn and the pattern it was just so great. I did also really enjoy the process of knitting this one. It's worked bottom up, so you cast on here at the ruffle edge and then you knit up. The ruffle does take a while. As you can see, it's a lot of fabric, so there's a lot of stitches that you're working on, but it doesn't go for too far. And then after that, it's it just flies off the needles. It's mostly stockinette and then you just make little triangle tops and then you're and then you're done. Bob's your uncle. <laughs> so Yes, this was definitely an enjoyable knit. Um, I would recommend you knit this for the warmer months. So maybe not right now for um, Northern Hemisphere, but if you're in the summer, Southern Hemisphere, then this is probably the perfect time of year for you to be working on that. So next, I think, okay, we'll go over socks. Okay, and then next, another pair of socks that I finished. I think these were on the needles for like more than a year. I remember I had finished one of them and then the other one, I finally just, it was, it was languishing and I just wanted to get the pair done. So these are, let's see, can I remember the name? I don't remember the name, but I do know that they are from the Lina 52 Weeks of Socks book. It's this really beautiful lace pattern here on the front. Just really cute little details. These definitely remind me of like preppy kind of schoolgirl socks, especially with how tall they are. Really adorable. Um, I used Vollenbein yarns for this in one of her lightly variegated colorways. I think it was Solstice, I think is what it was called. Um, to be honest, I haven't really gotten much wear out of these, maybe because of when I finished them, things were starting to cool off, um, and these really aren't the warmest socks. This this yarn um, is not the warmest, it being super wash, and it's also quite thin, and the gauge isn't very tight. I've been saying to you I really like a tight gauge for socks and slippers and things, so 
honestly haven't gotten that much wear out of it, but if you're looking for a pattern with a really beautiful lace motif to it, I would definitely recommend this pattern. Um, so it, it really opens up and stretches out when you're actually wearing them. Cute little eyelets, so it runs all the way, all the way down the sock there. So I think if I were to make these again, I would use a more solid yarn. Um, I think maybe even the slight variegation is kind of taking away from the lace motif, but yeah, I'm really just glad that I had these off the needles. I really don't like projects to be languishing forever because sometimes you can forget your gauge and then, I don't know, I just want things to be finished. <laughs> so yeah, I would recommend that for if you're looking for kind of um, pretty socks. Not really the most functional, but they are beautiful. And next is another pattern, um, another pattern of mine, very recently released. This came out a few days ago. This is the Caroline Shawl, also knit with New to Den yarn. And this was just such a fun project, just playing with so many different textures. And oh my goodness, this was just such a fun knit. I really wanted a design that was going to be big and cozy and comfortable. It is so, so warm and cozy. Now that I've actually gotten the pattern released, I've been wearing this pretty much nonstop. Um, I don't really like to wear my patterns before I release them, just in case for pictures or anything like that, I want to keep them in nice shape. Um, because once I start wearing things, I don't know, I just want it to stay nice. Anyways, <laughs> um, this is just such a cozy shawl and it's really, really huge. It's a 66, 66 inch wingspan, um, asymmetrical, so it just hugs you so well and you can wear it um, and style it in so many different ways. So, I mean, just look how cozy this is. You just throw on a jacket and you're good to go. This is, oh my gosh, it's like wrapping up in a big wooly cozy blanket. So I'm really, really happy with how this design came out, and it's really fun to knit. I had a lot of fun time, I had a lot of fun knitting it. So this pattern is worked from one end, and then you increase all the way out along the top edge. Um, so it's worked from this point here, and then you're just increasing all the way along this top edge, all the way down. Um, and another thing about this pattern is you could knit it to actually be as small or as large as you would like. Um, since you are increasing just on one side all the way across, you could just say stop at any point and make like a little shawlette, or you could even go crazy and go even bigger and make like a blanket, schlanket sort of thing. It's already kind of a schlanket. I can't even fit all of it in the frame. Um, yeah, but just really fun textures going on. And I definitely knit it with the idea that this is going to be a big knit. It is going to take a while. So I wanted the knitting to be enjoyable. So there's a lot of garter stitch. There's minimal purling. It's worked flat. And the charts are easily memorizable. So once you get it, you're kind of good to go along the whole thing. Um, and then these beautiful little braid stitches here. Yeah, just having a lot of fun with different textures. So there we go. I will have that linked below as well. And okay, everything else is new things that I haven't shared with you yet here. Um, these are things that I have been knitting for family members and friends um, for the holiday season for winter wear. So the first one is a pair of undulation mittens. These what, this was a pattern that I test knit for Life is Cozy. The designer is Ksenia of Life is Cozy. Um, I test knit this pattern for her back in, was it 2020? I don't remember when it was, but it, it feels like kind of a while ago. <laughs> um, but I just, ever since I saw the very first picture that she posted of this, I was in love with this pattern. It's just so gorgeous. These beautiful, elegant cables, they look like waves. And I just think they make, they just look so beautiful on your hand. I just, I really love this pattern. And it's definitely very fun to knit. Um, if you like cable knitting, I would definitely recommend this pattern. They're really great for a quick knit, quick Christmas present sort of a thing, even though Christmas has passed. 
um, just a, a nice little gift gift knit because they look so beautiful um, yeah I'm really happy with how these ones came out and for these ones I used Malabrigo yarn I'm not remembering the base I will put it here um, but I think I used their sport weight base so what whatever that is <laughs> um, so yeah some undulation mittens and then another pair of undulation mittens. So these ones I also knit for someone else in my family. She wanted them in a rusty orange. I have totally fallen in love with these ones. Like this pair specifically, I think I'm going to knit another one for myself because they are just, the color in this pattern I just think is so beautiful. Wow, just so cool, so rich. Um, the yarn that I used for these ones is a Lana Grossa. Oh, I'm forgetting the name again. I don't have the ball band with me right now, so I will put it right here, but I really recommend this yarn. This was my first time ever using this yarn. I remember I got this yarn at the Knitting Tree shop in LA, um, really great yarn shop in LA, and yeah, it's a cashmere base. I just, I had never heard of the yarn base, but um, it was really, really soft, and I think it's all cashmere or part cashmere. I'm not, I'll put it, I'll put it here and I'll put it down below um, for your information. But I really recommend this yarn base. It was quite surprising to me how cool it works up. So I would say it's a light fingering weight yarn, but it's really, really stretchy. And it's just, it's a chain at sort of a construction. So it's really unique. Um, it's fluffier, it kind of fills out, if that makes sense because you can pull on it and it gets really, really thin, but then like once it's blocked, it just really fills out and gets really fluffy. And it's so, so soft and it's thin and warm. I don't know, it's it's like a really cool yarn. I would definitely recommend trying it at least once. Um, you can pick it up at the Knitting Tree or online. Um, yeah, not sponsored, but just some really cool yarn. That surprised me. Um, so yeah, at this point <laughs> I have knit two pairs of undulation mittens. This, these were knit within like a couple couple of weeks and at this point I pretty much have the pattern all but memorized. <laughs> so a really really great pattern from Life is Cozy. I would highly recommend those mittens for you or gifts or anything like that. It's just a really great pattern. And then next we have the classic ribbed hat from Pearl Soho. This was one of the easy breeziest, most just like popcorn knitting project I've ever done. Um, it is pretty much all one by one ribbing and just a really great basic. I don't really know what else to say about it. It's, you can use any yarn pretty much. I used La Bienname, um singles, merino singles, and merino singles, um, that base is a fingering weight and this pattern is for a DK weight yarn. So I just held the yarn double throughout and that worked out perfectly. Um, I used the recommended needle size and got gauge on that. It's just a really, really great pattern. Definitely beginner friendly, um, a really quick knit. I think I knocked this out in two days. <laughs> so just really fun. And since it's one by one rib, you just get in a rhythm with it. And I was, I just, I found myself just keep picking it up. Just, I just kept it, picking it up over and over again. I just had it on my side table and whenever I had a spare moment, I would just just work on it. It was just, it was a really fun knit. So definitely would recommend this one also for gifts or for yourself. I'll probably be knitting one for myself. Oh yeah, another fun thing about this pattern, it's free, so that's great. <laughs> um, and then one thing I did want to note, um, it has worked bottom up, so you cast on at the hem edge at the bottom, and then you work up and you do some increases here at the top to finish up the cap and then you're gonna fold it back. So you can either wear it both ways. You can wear it like big and slouchy like this, or what I would do if this hat were for me, I would roll it up and have that little cute little ear cover up part to make it warmer right there. Um, but yeah, one thing I did wanna mention was that the pattern, I don't think the pattern said to do a twisted rib cast on, 
um, but I wanted to do that just because I like how it looks. It's kind of a similar look to an Italian bind off, it's just for a cast on. So there's plenty of tutorials out there, I will also link one below. But it just gives a really great finish to the hem of the ribbing. So it just makes it kind of look like it's disappearing into nothing. So yeah, that was just a really fun knit. And this yarn, ooh, Labiana May Merino Singles, this blocked out to be super drapey. Wow. I mean, it is a super wash, but yeah, that's nice. I think this would make, um, the yarn would make a really great shawl too. <laughs> and I don't remember the colorway on that one, but it's this gorgeous, variegated foresty green. I really, I really love that color. And then next, the last knit that I finished in 2022 are a pair of socks. These were also Kuda socks, so I used the Kuda sock method for the bottom portion, um, the foot area here, and then I just did an improvised little colorwork motif at the top here. So I used Mantelope yarn, um, yeah, Mantelope by Wool Dreamers for this brown, and then these two colors are New to Den yarns. Um, I think this one is Nina, and then the orange is Hadden from this year. So yeah, not really much else to say about these ones. Um, they're also going to be a gift, and again, I already know they fit the wear or they fit the recipient perfectly. Um, had them try it on so that I could make sure. I always like to do that with socks. If I'm gifting socks, I kind of. Uh, tell them what their present is before it's going to be their present because I want to make sure it's going to fit them well. So I already know these fit them like a glove. Um, so yeah, again, can't recommend the Kota Sock recipe more. Oh, and I think I forgot to talk about my hat. So this was also a knit of 2022. This is a test knit that I did for Herb Garden Knitwear. Um, it's the Monument hat, and this was also a really great hat. Um, to knit. This was, I used Manchalope yarn held double and a strand of Drops Kid Silk Mohair. Um, this was just such a fun knit, super quick because the, the gauge is, or the yarn is quite big and, and the gauge is a little bit open. Um, but for this unspun yarn, it really fills out and it gets very fluffy and fills in all the spaces. So it's a super warm hat. Um, and I was actually a little bit concerned that it was going to be kind of itchy on my forehead because I do have a sensitive forehead when it comes to more rustic yarns, but this doesn't bother me. Maybe because it's actually cold. <laughs> and I think that like when you're wearing more rustic wools when it's hot out, then you get more itchy. At least that's what I've found. But anyway, I really love this pattern. Again, super quick, super fun. Um, if you want a little bit more detail than just a basic stockinette or rib, I would definitely recommend this as even a gift knit or for yourself, just really great knit. Um, alrighty, and I think that's everything from 2022. So, a couple of plans for this new year. I am really going to be focusing on creating more knitwear patterns, um, or knitwear and accessories and things like that. I really had a lot of fun with designing this past year in 2022 and I have so many new ideas and so many things that I want to share with you and just create and I've just been having so much fun with it. So that will be kind of my main goal of 2023 is to focus on knitting more of my own designs and sharing those with you. So along that vein. Um, I have a new design that I'm going to be casting on very, very soon. Um, it will be using Nutiden yarn, no surprise. <laughs> and I will also be using Biche et Bouche mohair with it. So, I have all the yarn ready to go. So this is kind of the palette that's going to be happening. It's going to be a strand of new to den held with a strand of kid silk um or any kind of silk is this kid silk i believe so yes mohair and silk so yeah it will be the red held with the red and the gray held with the gray 
and there's going to be color work involved. So that's all I'll say for now, but I'm really excited. It's going to be a garment coming in the new year. So really excited about that pattern and then a lot of other things <laughs> on the way. Um, I already told you I have some mittens in the works that are Fields of Gold inspired. So those will be coming very soon as well. And then another gift, another gift knit actually that I have in the works is something that I'm knitting for my partner, um, my boyfriend Austin. He's been wanting a hand knit sweater and he actually really wanted um, the Le Garçon um, teddy bear sweater. I don't think that's what it's called. Anyway, <laughs> um, I've been working on that for him. So I thought I would include some hand spun in that. So I finished the first skein of hand spun for him for that sweater. So this is some beautiful fiber from Owner Oak Air, the same people who make knitted and yarn. So this is a two ply. I spun it to be a DK, DK weight yarn. So I think I actually reached that. Um, I'm going to be using some other non-hand spun yarn for this project. Um, I'm only doing hand spun for the color work um, sort of colors, but then for the main body portion of the sweater, I'm, I got um, we got some other yarn to use for that. But I'm really happy with how this came out. It is a beautiful fiber. I would highly recommend, if you're a spinner, I would highly recommend picking up some Ono Ok Air fiber to spin with. It just gives such depth of color. It's really beautiful. I personally really love um, woolen spun yarns and also when the fibers are mixed up before they're spun so that you get all these blips of color throughout and it's not just like one solid dye. You get kind of more life to the color, I think. Um, so that's how this fiber prep um, was done, I think. So there's a lot of different a lot of different little shades to it. I think overall it gives it like a browny green, um, gray brown green, but there's just so much life to it when you get up close. So yeah, that's the first skein done. I still have a few others to do. So then a couple of weeks ago, my partner and I also took a trip down to our local yarn shop, um, a verb for keeping warm based in, is it Oakland or Berkeley? <laughs> um, but yeah, was looking for the rest of the yarn for this sweater. So he picked out this beautiful, so, so special yarn. And these are all the skeins for it. So again, DK weight. It's a limited edition Daughters of a Shepherd wool. So it's a mixture of 50% Hebridean wool, Zwarpels, and Blueface. So they feel just absolutely beautiful. Definitely rustic, but not scratchy in any way. So the plan with these is to use this darker shade here, um, the darker one in the middle. We're going to use that one for the little teddy bears in the color work motif up here. And then the other gray is going to be for the rest of the sweater. So I think this is just going to be a beautiful sweater for him. Definitely our style and I can't wait to see it come along. I can't wait to cast on. Um, have to do some more spinning for that color work motif, but it's coming along and I'm really, really excited about it. So those are some plans for the new year and I will share with you more as we go along. And if you enjoyed, please do like this video and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss all of the new things I will be talking about this year and new patterns coming and all of those exciting things. And I'll see you next time. I hope you have a lovely rest of your week. Happy knitting, happy making, bye bye. <laughs>